Sporting players want a healthy field that has minimal games cancelled due to washouts. As such, when the clubs see their field looking like this year after year, it is not surprising that they sometimes look to synthetic turf to obtain a decent field. In this video, we will examine other options. Due to the amount of games that got cancelled and the number of injuries we were having as a club and in, during our league, at NWFA League, we were worried about more injuries coming out as the club grows and there being more issues. So we sought with, uh, with the council to try and get an artificial pitch down here because we believe that was the best solution. Based on the outlines from the Synthetic Field Guide on the Football New South Wales website, by the time fencing and lighting upgrades are included, the cost to construct synthetic fields is about $1.7 million per soccer field. After construction, synthetic fields will require regular grooming and cleaning, with the surface needing to be periodically replaced. They tend to wear out in much the same way as your carpet does. When averaged over a 20-year period, the maintenance costs are around $54,000 per year for each synthetic soccer field. But these costs would be higher if the field was intensely used. Synthetic fields also come with a significant environmental price tag. A, it destroys the natural environment. You would kill off all the invertebrates, all the insects, all the bird life. It becomes useless as a part of the environment. B, it's hot. I've been to one of these sports fields and I've watched what people do walking on it. You can't walk on it in bare feet. And I watched a dog walking on it, lifting up its feet as it walked across it. It is so hot. Whereas in an era of climate change, we really have to keep the, everything cool. And natural grass does that. The reason why so many sporting fields struggle is that they have been constructed or maintained incorrectly. Not only is it turf cover that suffers when the soil is not amended, but often fields constructed without any soil amendment are extremely hard. So here we have now a tent peg and basically you'll see that I cannot push it into the soil even though the soil, if you look at it, is actually quite wet right now. So it's very, very poor. The next thing you'll notice is this, we've got shots of other fields that are higher usage than this field here, and yet you'll see how thin the turf cover is already. It's already almost back to nothing. You can already see some of the bare surface on it. So this field here is gonna go backwards over time and always remain very, very hard and need intense aeration. If sporting fields are built and maintained correctly, they can handle very high levels of wear. There are living examples of fields that cope with considerably more than 40 hours per week, year after year, and recover without any turf patching. One of these fields is Middlehead Oval. Let's see how it performs. We're over the moon with it. Our, our men's Premier League team like this pitch so much now that they've actually moved their home games from Allen Border Oval to actually be at Middlehead Oval. So all our men's Premier League games are being played here this year, our home games, which is a fantastic compliment to the pitch. With the high construction and maintenance costs and significant environmental issues, football clubs often request synthetic fields unaware of other alternatives. The pitch wasn't uh, adequate enough to be used, so um, we believe the artificial pitch will be a solution. So if you are passionate about the environment and you see a sporting field that is struggling year after year, then contact the sporting club. Contact the council. There is no point in simply rebuilding a field using the same approach previously used. It will simply fail again. Council needs to get advice from an independent expert such as a certified professional soil scientist specialising in sports turf and rebuild the field correctly. The soil here at Middlehead Oval before it was amended was extremely hard but we've mixed compost to garden organics in it and so now it's much softer and easier to dig. You can see how it's got a healthy root system coming down here and that's because the soil's been amended. We're in a higher wear area here 
and it's still a little bit compacted and it will need a little bit of aeration over time, but nonetheless, you can see the root system's quite healthy in there. It only costs about 10% more to construct sporting fields correctly, and this will provide the users with a high quality surface that can handle high levels of wear. If you're faced with the option, my sense is everyone would prefer natural turf. I think what we've done here is show the community we can keep our natural turf and give, and give them the capacity they need. Healthy sporting fields capture more carbon dioxide. They allow great water infiltration and are cooler than poorly constructed fields. So by environmentalists helping sporting clubs obtain a great field, they can set up a winning situation for the environment. Once this solution was reached, everyone's happy. We've got a beautiful oval and we've got happy, happy sports players, happy environmentalists, and council can breathe a sigh of relief and say, thank goodness they're all off our backs. <laughs>